Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan, and today I'm going to show you exactly how to perform a hard computer reboot in an automotive system. So a hard reboot is exactly what it sounds like. It is taking all of the information in your computer inside your car and resetting it back to its factory specification. Think about when your phone or computer is acting weird and you restart it and it fixes everything. We're basically doing that, but on the hardest level, we're going to drain all those capacitors down and get it to basically how it rolled off the factory floor. This can fix problems ranging from an airbag light or an error on that front, a security lockout, which we're gonna cover later on in this video, or any kind of weird problem you don't have an explanation for. I would try this first since it's free and only takes a couple minutes of your time. In fact, recently I replaced one of these, a BCM, a body control module, because I thought something in here, one of the capacitors wasn't discharging correctly, or maybe there's just some kind of funkiness going on with it. And I tried it. it in the end, it didn't work. I did have to replace this, but it's a good thing to try because again, it's free and that could have fixed it. The problem with the car was it wasn't locking its doors. And uh, according to the uh, resource from General Motors, this is out of a uh, Impala, that the locking actually goes through the BCM. The door locks are controlled by this, so it was worth a try. But on the truck we're gonna work on, it's experiencing a security lockout. Basically, the owner tried to uh, unlock the door from the outside because the window was down, didn't think it was gonna be that big of a deal, but it tripped the computer into a security lockout. So the ECM is basically not starting the engine because it thinks it's getting stolen, like I say later in the video. Before we start this procedure, make sure the car is in park and you have all the accessories off, like headlights, you have your cell phone charger unplugged. You wanna create as little charge as possible being drawn from that battery because when we plug it back in, we don't want to spark. So just make sure that the car is as dormant as it possibly can be. And the, per and the parking brake is set and it's in park. So right here on our dash is our security light indicator. Basically, this is flashing to tell us that the security system has been tripped. And no matter how many times we try the key, even if it's the correct key and everything's kosher and fine, it's not going to start because the computer's protecting itself because it thinks it's getting stolen. And I'm going to show you how to reset that. And a lot of the time, this light will be actually on the dash itself. It'll be a little lock symbol. Here's a picture of what that looks like. Um, but on this particular truck, Ford put it there. Not sure why, but You'll, you'll know it when you see it. It'll be like a big flashing light or a big flashing lock, one of the two. So what we need to do is completely drain the computer's capacitors. Every module, every computer, everything inside of the truck needs to basically be reset on an electrical level. So we're going to use the battery to pull all of the charge out of the capacitors and all the memory. It's gonna reset all your radio favorites. It's gonna reset everything. And this is how you do it. So we're gonna take, in my instance, an eight millimeter deep well socket, and we're going to loosen the negative battery terminal cable. Make sure you don't touch the uh, positive with it, whatever tool you're working with. And we can remove that cable end and set it just kind of down and in such a way it doesn't accidentally just, you know, jump right over to the negative. In fact, if you're very worried about it, you can just put a terry towel over the negative and then you never have to worry about it and it's all good. Then we're going to grab a little, it doesn't have to be like a very robust wire. I just have this one I got off Amazon with two alligator clips linked down below in the description. And what we can do is connect it to the positive side and then to the negative side. Note, you are not touching the negative post on the battery, just the cable on the truck side or car side. And what this is doing right now is it is literally pulling all the electricity, all of the capacitors, all the memory, down and out of the ECM, which this one happens to be right here, and BCM and any other weird little modules uh, that your car might have or might be having a little bit of a problem, this will force it to go back to its factory settings. So it's gonna have to relearn everything. Also, if you live in a smog state or an inspection state, don't just do this and immediately go get it inspected or smog because it won't pass, the monitors won't reset. Depending on your car, that could take anywhere from 50 to 100 miles, it really depends. Uh, specific make and model. If you're really curious, you can go to our website, twocarpros.com, and ask a question. We'll be along shortly to help you out. And how long you should leave this for? Well, five minutes is a good bet, but there's really no, like, time limit. You could leave it like this overnight, and it's just fine, but I'm gonna let it sit for at least five minutes. So it's been a little over five minutes, closer to ten, honestly, but like I said, you can leave this overnight if you really want to. It's not gonna do anything. So we can go ahead and disconnect our alligator clips and set those aside, and then we can reconnect our battery. Now when we're reconnecting this, 
what I'm going to do is just touch it to the negative terminal to make sure it's not going to spark and get out of control and crazy because sparks from this can actually ignite the hydrogen gases that are off gas by the battery. Um, so basically if it sparks, you probably have a draw somewhere, maybe let the headlights on or something like that, but this truck's perfectly fine, ready to rock. And then again, mine happens to be an eight millimeters. Yours can be different. And I'm just going to snug that down. No real torque spec, just do it enough so you can't grab it and move it. If you can grab this and it'll actually move the terminal, then it's too loose, but this one's just right. All right, so now we can try starting the truck. It should work. The security lockout should be defeated. And there we go. It took a little bit because the fuel pump had to pressurize the system, but it runs perfectly good. So that is your fix for the day. So that's how to do a hard reboot on basically any car. This might fix any kind of weird uh, HVAC or SRS or um, security lockout problem that you might be experiencing. Now, when you plug everything back in and you start the car, you might get a check engine light depending on how finicky your car is. I know it sounds real vague, but you know, an F-150 is going to be much less finicky than a 2020 uh, Mercedes-Benz, for instance, or other uh, fancy luxury cars. They might have a little bit of a uh, problem that needs to be reset using a high-end scanner. Typically, those can be bought for about $500 on Amazon. I have one and I've used it every day since I bought it. They're very handy. If you have a more modern car, you're gonna need one anyway, just for other repairs that are going to come up. So it's not a bad investment to make. On this particular truck, however, a 2005 F-150, there was no lights, everything worked fine, and it was ready to go back on the road and relearn itself as far as like the fuel map, ignition timing, things like that. If you have any further questions on how to perform this, or maybe you're a little confused on if there's any kind of lights that come on or any kind of trouble codes that arise, you of course can go to our website, twocarpros.com and ask a question for absolutely free. And our team of automotive experts will be along shortly to help you out. Thank you so very much for watching. If you found this video helpful or interesting at all, please consider clicking that join button down below and becoming a member is a direct way to help out the channel. Barring that, a like, comment, and subscription go a long way in helping the channel out as well. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.